Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters, and welcome again to St. Mark AME Church. We thank you so much for joining us today uh, for our worship service, and we ask that you will continue to pray and trust God in everything. He is the author and the finisher of our faith, and he keeps on working miracles day after day. We thank God for this opportunity to come to you. And we pray that something in today's message will not only encourage you, but will strengthen your relationship with the Lord. And if you don't know him for yourself, today is a great day to accept him as your personal Savior. May God bless you and God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we just come to you thanking you for being the God of love. Thank you, Lord, for being the God of mercy. Thank you, Lord, for being a God that sits high and looks low to Heavenly Father and watch over all of your people. Lord, we just come to you today just asking the Heavenly Father that you would be with those who are sick and shut in. Lord, be with those who have lost loved ones. Right now, Lord, we just ask a special blessing on the Newman and um, McCarthy family right now, Lord, and the loss of our dear sister, dear Heavenly Father. We ask, Lord, that you would just be with them and be with us, Heavenly Father. Lord, letting us feel your loving arms wrapped around us. Lord, we just thank you for her life and knowing, Lord, that the word tells us, you, you promised us to Heavenly Father that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord for those who know you. And we thank you, Lord, for the life and the legacy that she leaves. We just ask, Lord, that you would just continue to be with all those that um, are without today to Heavenly Father for whatever reason they might be. Lord, we ask that you would bless those that are suffering from mental health or any kind of illness to Heavenly Father. We just ask, Lord, that you would intervene and be there and place in their lives the things that will be helpful for them to Heavenly Father, medically, mentally, or spiritually, whatever it is they may need. Lord, we ask that you would be with those, Heavenly Father, that don't know you for themselves. Lord, we ask that someone will be placed in their lives that will answer the question for them what they must do to be saved. Lord, we thank you for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you sent to die for sinners such as us. Lord, we just ask right now that you would just continue to watch over us, continue to cover us to Heavenly Father from all the wicked and wiles of the world. Lord, we ask that you would just forgive us and, and wash us, Lord, of anything that is not of you to Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you would help us to be more like you. Lord, we ask that you would help us with all the, the fighting and the the um, turmoil and things that's going on in the world, Lord. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would just be in the midst of Heavenly Father. Lord, giving us wisdom and, and knowledge and understanding to Heavenly Father that in order to receive you to Heavenly Father, we have to stop, listen, and stop the fighting and stop the madness. Lord, we just love you today. We thank you. We ask, Lord, that as those who are going to be bringing forth the word today, Lord, we ask, Lord, that all that comes today, is been, it comes from on high and that it reaches your people. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We praise you. We give your name all the honor, the glory, and the praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, I will be reading today's scripture. First, we have Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Next is Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were filled, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise the Lord. Welcome once again. My brothers and sisters, I want to take a look at uh, two of the scriptures that was read in your hearing today. Um, that is Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And it says this, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured 
with the power from on high. And also, I want to take a look at verse number four in the second chapter, the book of Acts. And it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let us pray. Eternal God, thank you once again for allowing us this opportunity just to be in your presence. We thank you for your grace and mercy extended to us while we were yet sinners, Lord, you died on the cross to set us free. Now, Lord, we ask that you would continually be with the sick, the shed in, be with those who are struggling, God, just to try to make ends meet. Be with this nation, oh God, in this world. And God, we especially lift up the situation in, in, in Israel, oh God, that you just bring peace, oh God, like only you can. God, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask that you would hide thy servant behind the cross, Lord, in the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart, that it be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful day as we celebrate Pentecost. Amen. We celebrate Pentecost today. And I want to talk to you today about the promise. I want to talk to you about the promise. As we saw uh, in the scripture text that was read today, um, we saw in the book of, um, of uh, 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 Luke in chapter 24, we see that Jesus comes to the point where he tells the disciples, he tells all of them, he said, listen, I need you to go wait, amen, in Jerusalem. I need you to wait uh, until the promise of my father comes. He said, just stay there in Jerusalem and you will be endured with power from on high. First of all, my brothers and sisters, as we read our text in the book of Acts today, we see a couple of things. We see already that there had been a promise made but oh my goodness, we see that that promise wasn't just made, but that promise was kept. We also see that the disciples were obedient to what Jesus told them to do. And when you obedient, my goodness, won't the Lord bless you real good. Another thing we see is that they were together on one accord. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, we praise God today because we praise him for the promise the promise that came from the Father. Jesus said, you just go, you wait, amen, for the promise. One of the things that I love about this text is the fact that Jesus is a promise keeper. Not only does he make a promise, but he keeps his promises. He promised that he was gonna send them a, a, a promise from the Father. And so they went and they were obedient to what the Lord asked them to do. And they went and waited. Now, how many of us sometimes the Lord asks us to do something and we don't always follow through? Matter of fact, we try to do everything we can to avoid what the Lord uh, tells us to do. And, and we just don't be obedient to what God's word is saying. But my brothers and sisters, what a blessing that this day was, this day of Pentecost, this day that the Holy Spirit showed up and the promise of the Father was, was fulfilled. Amen. And we see that it was, it was a miraculous and it was a tremendous thing that happened in the life of the church. Amen. If you could, you just, uh, uh, I want you to go back and I want you to read the entire uh, chapter of Luke 24, read the entire chapter of Acts chapter two, and you can see the miraculous things and how God keeps his word and how his word is truth. But just see the wonderful things that's transpiring here. As we see our text today, we see that they came and they tarried there and they were all together on one accord. Now, one of the things that happens a lot of times, not only in church, amen, somebody, but it also happened in our life and our families and stuff like that. We just can't seem to come to an agreement. We can't seem to come to an agreement at the same time and in the same place. But my brothers and sisters, those who were there in that upper room, they came together, they came on one accord, amen, and they were being obedient to what Jesus had asked them to do. They waited for the promise. They trusted and believed in God's word that God would fulfill the promise that he had made. So we see them waiting there. And because of their obedience, amen, this, 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 this Holy Spirit, uh, uh, this uh, 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 rush of mighty wind that comes in, it came in unlike anything that ever happened before, comes in with the sound of a mighty rushing wind. 
And, and then when you look around, they look like they had tongues of fire on top of their heads. So this is an amazing and miraculous thing that not just happens to some of them, but it happens to all of them in this place. And then I love in verse uh, uh, four in Acts chapter two, what it says, they began to speak in other tongues. But listen to this, as the what? The spirit gave them utterance, amen. As the promise gave them utterance. And that's what we wanna talk about. We wanna talk about the promise and the promise is the Holy Spirit. We, we're so thankful and grateful that the promise was in control. The Holy Spirit was in control of the men because guess what? Everybody else around them and everybody else that heard them speak were amazed and astonished. Why? Because they said, well, these are Galileans. They don't even speak all of these different languages. But here we are gathered in this place together. And how come we hear them speaking in our own languages? It wasn't them, it wasn't the disciples, but it was the promise of the Father that, 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 that came over them that allowed them to speak in these other languages. And what did they hear? They heard the wonderful works of God. My goodness, how amazing it must have been that all of them from all over the place began to hear the wonderful works of the word of God. And the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, the promise of the Father does not come to confuse us. It does not come to, 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 to make us uh, out to be anything other than a child of God, but it comes to bring clarity. It comes to speak truth. It comes to right wrongs. And the Spirit came upon them that day to be able to speak in other languages to tell the wonderful works of God. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And we're so thankful to God that the promise came because he promised that it would. And we can trust and believe if Jesus makes a promise, he's definitely going to keep his promise. They were obedient to what the Lord asked them to do. And they received the promise of the Father. Not only were they able to speak in these different languages, but the people were able to hear in their own native language. And we can see in the text that they came from all over, but each one was able to hear in their native language. That's nothing but the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit that came over them and allowed them to be able to testify of God and his wonderful works. My brothers and sisters, we have to put ourselves in position today for the Holy Spirit to still work and to still use us as willing vessels as we're obedient to the things of God. The Spirit of God will come and allow us to do miraculous and wonderful works, not of our own power, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, the promise that the Father gave. And we're grateful and thankful that the Holy Spirit is still at work all over the world and all in our lives today. But we have to be obedient, just like the disciples were. We have to come to the place where we're on one accord. We're in one mindset to be thinking of the things of God and worshiping him and spending time with the Lord. And we can come together whether we're families, uh, uh, whether you live on that side or this side of the street or wherever you come from, but you can come together on one accord when it comes to the things of God. And we began just like then to hear and rehearse the wonderful works of God as they came that day, as they sat in that room, God poured out his spirit on them. Just like the prophet Joel had prophesied that he would come, that he would pour out his spirit on the sons and the daughters and they would begin to prophesy. God makes promises, but he really, really, like no other, keeps his promises. There's nothing like breaking a kid's heart when you're promising that you're going to do something and then you don't wind up doing it. 
That's not who our God is. He not only makes them, but he keeps them. And we see that in this instance, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ was spread. And if you began to read a little further, you know, there are always naysayers in the crowd because people began to say, well, they must be drunk. There must be something wrong with them. And then Peter began to share with them that, hey, it's too early for that in this time of the day. But he began to expound upon the, the message of Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, on that day, over 3,000 souls gave themselves to the Lord and accepted him as their savior. When the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit works. But we have to put ourselves in position to receive the promise of the Father. We have to trust and believe that the promise is gonna do what it's gonna do wherever it needs to do it at. And just like that day, all of those souls who came to Christ were from all over the place. And you can best believe that they went back and told somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Why do you say I say that? Because Jeremiah said, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. I could not keep it to myself. It's the promise that moved and did that. That same promise is working through us today to share the gospel message with others that don't know Jesus for themselves, to help them out of the muck and the mire, to bring them upon solid grounds, the foundation of Jesus, the chief cornerstone, to help them to be who all that they can be through Jesus's name. The promise is a teacher and a guide to lead us on the right path of righteousness and to correct us when we step outside of that righteousness and to bring comfort to us when we're hurting and in pain. We're thankful to God for the promise that he kept. We're thankful to God for the promise coming. And we're so thankful to God that that same promise that came on the day of Pentecost still continues to come, still continues to change lives, still continues to compel those to say, what must I do to be saved and to accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior? The promise keeps on coming. The promise keeps on working. The promise keeps on changing lives, saving marriages, ending wars, and destroying yokes that are unequal. And we thank God today for the promise. We thank God today that folk are still working, still striving to be on one accord, still try, striving to be obedient to the word of God. And if they do that, my brothers and sisters, God will send the promise. The promise will overtake you even in the midst of where you are and whatever you're doing, the promise will come. And the promise will take control and do what the promise needs to do in order to make this world a better place. Aren't you glad? that the promise is still making differences in the lives of people today, just like it did on the day of Pentecost. We give God praise, we give God glory for the promise today. And we thank him so much for being a promise maker and being a promise keeper. Because on that day, as the Holy Spirit descended, gave them the power to speak in other languages, the things of God. And those who heard over 3,000 came that day and gave their life to Christ. And I pray, my brothers and sisters, even today as we speak, even today as you're out there listening, if there be a one that don't know Jesus for themselves, today is the day to accept what the promise is telling you, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Accept him 
as your savior, accept the promise that Jesus bled and died and hung on an old rugged cross. They laid him in a bar tomb, but my brothers and sisters, out on the third day, the promise got up out of the grave with all power in his hand, and he went to ascend at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. The promise is still making a difference. The promise is still there to help us out of trouble. The promise is still there to guide us and strengthen us along the way. The promise is still there to show us love. The promise is still there to give us joy. So won't you put your hands together and give God praise for the promise is still with us. In Jesus' name, give him glory, give him praise because the promise will never leave and the promise will never forsake us because the promise that came on Pentecost is here to stay. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God keep you one from another. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we pray that something in today's message resonated with you. And if you have never given your life to Christ, today is a great day to do it. Why don't you just repeat after me? Here I am, a sinner, Lord, saved by your grace. I know I've been trying to do it on my own, but I can't. And Lord, you are the only way that I can have eternal life. And I ask you right now, God, to come into my life and save me. I know you sent the promise so that I can have a better life. And I accept you now as my personal savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have accepted Christ for the first time, my brothers and sisters, or if you're looking for a church home, or, or you just want to be in like fellowship with one another to, to be able to praise and to worship God, to study his word in Bible study and in church school or in prayer, whatever the situation is, please wait at the end of this message. We'll find ways that you can contact us here at St. Mark. And my brothers, if you accepted him, welcome to the kingdom of God. May God bless you. May he continue to keep you. And do not forget the promise is still with us. God bless you. God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. What a mighty word from the Lord. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we want to pray with you. Use the contact information on the screen and someone from St. Mark will reach out and pray with you. Also remember, we are still continuing to praise the Lord in this digital space. We have our prayer calls on Tuesday, our weekly Bible study on Wednesday, and then our church school on Sunday morning. Visit our website to find out all about the specific times. Finally, if you would like to continue to support this ministry through donations or tithes and offering, visit our website. We hope that you had a wonderful time worshiping the Lord with us today. In Jesus' name, amen.